that today your presence and your glory would invade their lives. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would overwhelm and overshadow them, God, that today, that God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, God, would come into every detail of their life. Come in, God, and overwhelm them and overshadow them. We ask today that you would open wide the eyes of the heart of this generation, God, they would see clearly, they'd see properly, God, that, God, you would illuminate the eyes of their heart. You'd flood the, the eyes of their heart with light, God. We say, God, light be, light be, be formed and begin to transform this generation. We declare in Jesus' name, the light of God overwhelms and it's greater than any place of darkness. We thank you the light of God manifests and exposes every place of darkness. God, those places where the enemies had his work, were the places where he's produced fear and doubt and lies and deception. We thank you that today the light of God breaks in. The light of God overwhelms. We declare this light. It overwhelms all darkness. It declares all darkness to go today. We declare in Jesus' name the light of God to fill and flood the eyes of this generation's heart. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are coming even now, God, to touch, God, every one of our young people, every one of our children, every one of our young adults, God, that the eyes of our heart are being enlightened, being flooded today with light. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would drive from them, God, every place that God would be sensual, every place that would cause them to live based upon this world and based upon the precepts and the understanding of this world. We declare today, let the word of God be the lamp to their feet, let it be the light to their path. Let the word of God be the thing that shines bright. Come on, I need some people to pray with me in this room. God, we just pray that the light of God would break forth. The light of God would break forth, God, in every place of the life. We just declare today that even now the spirit, God, that has blinded the eyes of this generation is being removed. We rebuke it and we resist it. God, we thank you in Jesus' name that today that that light, God, has the power to uh, uh, interrupt every pattern of deception in the hearts and the minds, God, of young people. We declare today in Jesus' name that this light breaks forth, God. We say, God, let Christ's light shine upon them. We declare, awake, O sleeper, let Christ shine upon you. We thank you that today that there's no slumber and there's no sleeping for this generation, but there's only a generation that pursues you and serves you with all of their heart and all of their mind. We say today that the Holy Spirit himself, God, is illuminated and filling their life. We thank you that today that you're rebuking and resisting that deaf and dumb spirit. We command that deaf and dumb spirit to be loosed from their life. And we release to them the ability to hear clearly, attentive hearing. We declare attentive hearing over this generation. We declare clear laser focus with their eyes to see clearly and to see properly in Jesus' name. And we thank you that, Holy Spirit, that you are causing their spiritual senses to be awakened. And God, their attentiveness to the natural things and to normal things and to common things. Things, God, to no longer have attraction for the life. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are stirring up, stirring up a desire in this generation for more of you. We declare that this generation is not led by their emotions. We declare they're not led by their feelings. We declare they're not led by what they see or what they hear in the natural. We declare in Jesus' name that they are only moved by the Holy Spirit. We declare that you're raising up a culture of people here at Citadel Church, God, that are not moved by the natural things, that are not moved by earthly things, that are not moved by temporary things, that are not distracted, God, with normal, common living, God. We say even today, God, let people come in agreement with heaven, God. Let people partner with heaven, God, and no longer partner with what is natural, partner with what is earthly or carnal. We declare today that you're raising up a people, God, that are separated to the Lord, fully devoted to you, hearts that are abandoned to you, one heart, one mind, God, fully given to you. We declare, God, that we love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. We thank you that even today you're raising up a generation, God, that like uh, Elijah's 
a servant, God, had his eyes open wide to see what was really happening. God, we thank you. You're raising up parents and you're raising up leaders and you're raising up pastors and you're raising up men and women in young people's lives, God, to help them see clearly, to see rightly, God. We declare that, God, we are not going to be those that would tolerate or allow, God, any place of God looking at natural things. God, we declare that, God, we are going to lead them in the way that they should go. God, even as we've been hearing, God, that we're going to help them bring Brock to the right place. God, that they would not miss God's call or purpose for the life. So we declare today in Jesus' name, God, that we're going to take our role as leaders. We're going to take our role as parents. We're going to take our role, God, as ones that God see clearly, God, in their life. And God, we declare today, God, let us be those, God, that have the ability to pray and their eyes are open wide. Let us be those that have the ability, God, to call forth and call out, God, the gift and the potential and the talent in all of our young people. We declare today that, God, you're raising up God's separated ones. You're raising up burning ones. You're raising up ones, God, that are a light and a lamp, God, for you, God. Raising up, God, people like John the Baptist, God, that are burning ones in their generation, God. We say today, let the Holy Spirit himself ignite an inferno, God, of passionate love, God, in the heart of this generation, God. We declare that we're not going to live, God, for this world anymore, God. We put to death, God, all that which is natural, God, and we pursue what is eternal, God. Lord, I pray that our hearts and our minds will be fixed on eternal things and not temporary things. Lord, I pray that you'd raise up God. God, parents and pastors and leaders and teachers, God, that are more concerned about uh, eternal things than they are natural things, God. Raise up people that are more concerned about the soul of a person than they are, God, just the natural comfort of a person. We say today, raise up a generation, God, that is passionate, God, and dedicated and devoted, God, to living for you all the days of their life. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you begin to fill our homes, fill our homes with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Fill our homes with the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask that you be more real and more intimate, God, with every one of our family members in our homes, God. We declare that our homes are separated to the Lord. They're separated to you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. God, we are raising up passionate people. We're not moved by anything natural. We're not moved by anything normal, God. We're not moved by our own feelings. We're not moved by any of these things of this world, God. We declare that we live, God, anchored to a higher reality, God. We live with our eyes set on the things above and not on the things below, God. We thank you that today that you are strengthening the faith. You're strengthening the faith, God, of young people today. We declare that their faith is being strengthened. We declare that young people's faith is being strengthened, that you're solidifying them in their faith, God. God, we thank you that, God, they're not going to be shaken in this season, that, God, they're not going to give in to the things, God, of the world in this season, God, but they're being strengthened through all the things they're going through. God, we declare in Jesus' name the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit to strengthen them in their inner man, to strengthen them in their inner being, God. Even as your word says outwardly we're wasting away, but inwardly we're being renewed day by day. God, we ask for the renewing of the Holy Spirit in the inner man of our youth, our children, and our young adults, God. We declare for the strength, God, in parents, God, for them to stand up and to be strong no matter what comes their way, God. For them to be the leaders in their home, to be the voice of God to their to their kids in their home. God, we declare in Jesus' name that, God, you're raising up people that are proper, that are righteous, that are aligned, that are obedient to the word of the Lord. We thank you that, God, that you're raising up people that are shaking off all all the things of this world, God, and God are giving themselves fully to the things of God. We declare today in Jesus' name that this generation is separated to you. This generation is hungry for you. This generation longs for you. This generation thirsts for you. This generation craves you. This generation wants you. God, with all of their desire, they pursue you. With all of their getting, God, they pursue wisdom. With all that's within them, God, they cry out for the Lord. God, we declare today that we shall magnify the Lord. And God, in our mouth shall be found praise. That you are worthy of all that's within us, God. 
And we're not going to let any of the things of this world, God, keep us silent or keep us quiet, God. But we're going to be those that will up, uh, hands lifted up and hearts abandoned to the Lord. God, we'll give ourselves fully to the Lord. We declare today in Jesus' name, God, that we're going to train the rebellious in the way to walk. We're going to train those, God, have walked wayward ways, God, to come into the straight and narrow, God. We declare, God, let there be, God, even as Pastor Tracy's preached, God, a narrow path. God, let them find the narrow path. Let them find that path where they feel restricted and limited, God, that they can only walk this way. They can only move forward. They can only walk the straight path, God. We declare in Jesus' name that we are not just believers, but we are followers. We are those who will follow you no matter what you say, no matter where you lead us, no matter where you guide us, God. We are those that are putting to death, God, childish ways and foolish ways and we're choosing the way of wisdom we're choosing the way of life God we declare God let our homes be baptized by the Holy Spirit let our homes be filled with the fragrance of heaven let our homes be filled with the very substance of heaven itself God until every part of our being is yielded until every part of our being is given to you God we thank you that God we are no longer God moved by the things of this world but we are consumed by heaven's reality we say let heaven fill our homes. Let heaven fill our young people and let our lives be absolutely given to you. We declare today that God there is an appointed youth quake for this generation and God we refuse to give up. We refuse to give in and we refuse to allow anything else but God what you've spoken over this generation. So we declare it. Let it be in Jesus name. Amen. Come on. You guys excited to be in the house of God today? Woo, come on, we're good, strong prayers today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. We're praying today about awakening. Sleepers. Sorry, I didn't mark my spot. Jonah 1. I know where it is. I just didn't mark it. <laughs> Hello, everyone online. Glad that you're here with us. Um, looking forward to testimonies. It would be wonderful to get testimonies of how this is helping. How this is helping those that are online. Our biggest question is how many of you are still online with us? So if you can answer that question for us, let us know. Uh, then we will determine whether or not we need to uh, do something different. If we continue to come together, of course, we love to pray. So prayer is not going to stop just the way we do it may be become different. So today I want to talk to you about jo Jonah. And when I was praying about what to share this morning, uh, this afternoon, with uh, for, for how to pray for our young people, I, I realized that there was something in the story of Jonah that we needed to look at. And so let's start in verse 1 of Jonah 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, Amittai saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it. It's interesting that God wanted someone to cry out against this city. And that's, um, that's something that I believe that God is looking for in this generation, that uh, he's looking for those that would prophesy or cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And so when there's wickedness rising, God has to raise up a generation that will speak up. We can't be a generation that's quiet. There's got to be a generation. Someone has to speak up. And obviously, no one was willing to speak up. So God had to raise up a Jonah that would speak up. And so as God was saying, hey, I want you to go to Nineveh because Nineveh is a wicked city. It's a great city. Um, I believe that speaks of the size, but also of the potential. I believe that America is a great nation, has this, the size and the potential. But there needs to be an awakening. There needs to be something that causes it to, to awaken, to cry, to, to come to its potential. And um, I think one of the greatest wickedness that we have is not the fact that we 
there's a lot of sin. What they were saying about uh, Nineveh is that it wasn't an idol worshiping community. Uh, it was one that oppressed the poor. Uh, it was one that didn't take care of people anymore. It was it was it had lost kindness. Uh, it lost certain you know elements of just being a good society. But it wasn't an idolatrous uh, territory, and they were the complete enemies to Israel. So um, if they if God's for them, then He would all of a sudden not be for Israel because Israel wouldn't repent. And so um, it is said that they thought that if Jonah went and cried out to them and they repented, that all of a sudden the attention would turn back to Israel, that they would have to repent because God's been asking Israel to repent, but they hadn't repented. And so the cry out wasn't just to go out and cry out against them for the sake of destruction, but it was very obvious that God was going to call them to repentance so he could then turn and say, see, even those that don't serve me repent. Where are you? It's interesting that we should have a generation like that right now that the church is called to ask the world to cry out, to repent. But the church is not repenting because the church is tolerating. And so it's the same scenario. You have Israel who was sinful, living in sin, unrepentant. And then you have Nineveh that was unrepentant. And there needed to be one that was from the house of Israel that would cry out and say, you know what, God is going to do this and cause the world to repent. I believe that there's a wave where the world will repent, where the church is still unrepentant. I mean, I don't know what that looks like, but I think that, 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 would, that the world is going to start asking for standards. They're going to start asking for, um, for, for belief systems. The world is losing. It's, it's lost its belief systems. It doesn't believe in a lot anymore. So it's going to begin to ask for belief systems, rules, and, and regulations. And we know that it has to happen because the Antichrist is not going to come into a society that is lawless. He's going to come into a society that has God-ruled um, environment. It's a God-ruled environment. It's a holy place that he rises up. It's the same as a... Uh, a Nimrod or a Nero, a Nero they, are, they arise up in this environment where God is ruling and controlling, and then they rise up to try to take authority. I don't know why I got there. Excuse me for a second. Sorry, I got down in the air conditioning. My nose started running. Thank you. Okay, so, so it's important that we know that God is raising up a, um, a generation that's kind of in between. We have two unrighteous, thank you. We have two unrighteous cities, this Nineveh. Think about that. We have churches that are, that are giving themselves over to unrighteous standards that the world has. That's this, that's this scenario that Jonah is being sent to, is that he has a city that he is from, the people of Israel, that they are not repentant. And then you have a, a, a city that is completely not godly, never even said that they were trying to be. And uh, he's being sent to the one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying not to sound like a trumpet. That's interesting. Praise the Lord. So, so we have this, um, we have this scenario. It's a beautiful scenario where God is going to call the 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 least likely to repent to repent. And I want us to see in that in this generation that that that's what God's looking for. And so He picks a Jonah. He picks one. He says, "I want you to go." And He says, "Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it." For their wickedness has come up before me. And I think that last week's with, with um, the Sodom and Gomorrah, the unrighteousness is rising up. And this week, the Lord's saying this, that we need to understand that unrighteousness doesn't just settle. It rises up before God. It actually comes up before God. And there's a point where it's so thick and, and pungent that he has to respond. And I believe that, you know, we can't just look at this United States and look at the laws and look at all the stuff and think, ah, you know what, I don't know what's ever going to happen. It's going to rise up before God. And it's like a prayer. Prayers rise up. Just as prayers rise up, so does wickedness. It all comes up as a form of worship that rises up before God. It's funny because last night I, 
I taught for an hour and 45 minutes to men on pornography. And I, I thought it was just, I mean, I, was, I couldn't believe it. I thought I talked 45 minutes, but I ended up talking an hour and 45 minutes on regarding pornography. And I, and I recorded it, and so I'm going to give it out because I think, um, you know, we need it in every, in every level. And so, uh, but it's, it's funny because the more, you know, we were, we were talking about how the industry, the, this, the pornography industry, the sex trade industry is the number one business in the world. Business. It's a business. It's not just. And so we need to know that it's, it's rising up. And as it rises up, God's going to have to respond. And the way he responds is he says, you. <laughs> and so what we need to pray is that our children would be ones that God would point at. And say, you. You go over there. And you go and warn them. And you be the voice that I need you to be. And you manifest what I need you to manifest. And it says, but in verse 3, this is the temptation of a generation that's called to bring change. The temptation of a generation that's called to bring change. It says, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. <laughs> he arose to flee. He ran away from the call. And I see so many young people running away from the call of God. He ran to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he ran out of the presence of the Lord and got to a place, Tarshish, and, and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. And, and it says that he, he paid a, the fare. It's funny because no matter where you're running to, there's always going to be a price. There's a price in your runaway. It's a price in staying where you're supposed to be. And so we need to pray that our children are ready and, and willing to pay the price of the call to stay in the presence of God because if they run away from the presence of God, they're also going to pay a price there. There's always a fare to be paid. <laughs> and it's funny because he's headed to Tarshish. Uh, the, the, one of the lexicons I read on, to, on the meaning of Tarshish, some say it's a yellow stone or it's a yellow, that's a, that's a direct translation, but um, uh, I think his name was Genesea. His, his, his lexicon was saying that the meaning means a broken place. He ran to brokenness. He ran to a place where he was going to be broken. And we don't realize that our children that are running away from their call are only running to be broken. That that, that place of running is going to lead them to a place of brokenness, and they're actually going to pay the price to be broken. And then they find themselves in on the journey to a broken place. It's interesting that he didn't actually get to Tarshish. Because God's never going to allow them to go as far as they want to go. And because if they go as far as they want to go, the broken place is dangerous. It's a place in, in another translation that said they were subjected. You know, that means they were completely bound, the place where they're completely bound. If a person has a call on their life, God is going to keep talking to them, even though they're running from that call. And you need to ask the Lord that he would put a call on your children and that they, it would be the evidence of their call would be on their life because it will save them, even though they're running. The call of God on Jonah was what was saving him. He was not called to go to Tarshish. He was called to go and speak to Nineveh. And as long as he was, he was running away from his call, God was still going to walk with him, talk with him, speak with him, because he's trying to save him before he gets to Tarshish. You, you guys got this? And so he paid the price at Joppa to get on a ship to go to Tarshish, and, and it says, and he went down into it. Do you see it? He paid the fare. He didn't even stay on the top, but he went down to the lowest place of the ship. There's a story in the, in, in the Tomo that says this, that um, Judaism and the Bible is, is like, they, they describe Ju Judaism. So when I say Ju Judaism, I want you to think about uh, our ship. Our ship is the church, and Judaism is like a boat that is tossing on the water. Of, the world is like the water, but the law is like an anchor that goes into the water that keeps the Jewish ship in, in a tumultuous world stable. Okay, so think about this, it being a ship. So the, you, he left one vehicle, which was the call of God to go someplace, and he got into another ship, another belief system. 
I want you to see that there are children are looking. I talked to some parents and they're saying, yeah, they're, they're testing their beliefs. They're trying to figure out their own beliefs. I'm going to just let them figure out their own beliefs right now. And I want you to know what you're doing is you're letting, you're letting them get into a ship, a ship that will isolate their thinking. It will house where they live and it will house what they do. And it will be how they interpret the world based upon that belief system. So if you just allow them to get their own belief systems, you're literally tossing them into a, allowing them to go into a ship, pay the price to get all the way down to the depth of that. And you don't know if they're actually going to be able to come up from it. You can't allow belief systems to be gained on their own. You have to speak to them. You have to bring truth to them. You have to speak the word to them, not opinion. And you have to allow the belief systems to be like that anchor that is going to anchor them. The word of God has to be that anchor of their soul that is going to be anchored in that space so that they don't ever be tossed around to and fro. Because a belief system is a ship on the waters of this world. And the waters of this world will take it whichever way the current is wanting to take it. So you don't allow this free thinking you want to pray that that stuff off well I can't talk to them you know I talk to them I just can't talk to them but you can talk to God about the thinking the isolated realm of thinking the isolated way that they thinking the liberated way of thinking we have a generation that's thinking in their own ship right now and they're being tossed to and fro in the earth and there's we need now someone that will begin to pray and say, Lord, let the proper belief systems come around a generation and let them find themselves flowing with what you want in the earth and be anchored in their soul with the word of God. And so he went down to the bottom of it. This is, this is the port that the, the Lord told me uh, to speak. This is how he brought this to me because he showed me a vision of Jonah in the bottom of of the boat, not in the, bo- not in the belly of the well, because before he was in the belly of the well, he was in the bottom of the boat. He hit the lowest form of thinking, his lowest realm of thinking, his lowest standards of living. He was at the lowest of the low. And we need to make sure, yes, isolation, we need to make sure that we are praying the lows out of our children and we're praying the isolation off of our children. It's amazing how a young person can go into heaviness real quick and how they can go into depression and isolation. We need to sweep that off of them with prayer and make sure that they are not isolated because they are isolated because they're running from their call. Your call brings you before people. Not makes you hide from people. So whenever a person's not walking in their call, they're going to be hiding. They're going to be isolated. They're going to be separate. They're going to be in a place where they feel completely comfortable with their, their lower standards. He went down into the lower standards. You guys see this with me. And the Lord, he's, he's gone down into this to go with them to Tarshish. And remember, he's going down with them to Tarshish to the broken place, to the place of subjection, and he's running from the presence of the Lord. Now, this is the one who is the answer to the world. The world is going to change and be transformed because he has a voice for them. He is a voice for the world. She is a voice for the world. And the, the church isn't going to receive that voice because this voice is for the world. And I believe that God's raising up a generation that has a voice for the world, that the world is going to repent faster than the church. And that there's a generation that is going to have the right sounds, the right songs, the right business plans, the right ways of doing things. And they're going to introduce it to the world. And the world's going to say, we believe that. We like that. We receive that. And in that, the world is going to come to a place that is lifting them up from the lower places before, right, before Israel. I got so excited. I'm sorry. I'm just. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. On the way to the broken place, God is going to do everything he can to break up the wrong mindsets. He doesn't want you to reach the broken place. He doesn't want your children to reach the broken place. So he's going to begin to cause troubles. It's amazing how a person, I've seen young people do this often, is that they're like fighting for a relationship with a friend. 
And then they, they were like fighting, mom, I, I want to hang out with them, or this is what my friends are doing. Or, and they're fighting for that relationship with their friend. They finally get that friendship, and then that friendship starts to break apart. It's amazing how God will set things up. That he allows things that you think are safe places to begin to fall apart when you're running from the call of God. And I pray that all of our children, when they're running from the, the call of God, and they are trying to run into what they consider a safe place, may that thing break apart. May everything that they're trusting in break apart so that they can find themselves in need of God and not in need of continuing to run. May they be awakened in negative, of negative mindsets or wrong perspectives. Verse 5, and then the, mar- the mariners were, were afraid. I love this. The people that are on this with them, they're mariners. So that you, you know what a mariner is, right? It's someone who is used to being on the waters. So that means this storm is of a level that they're not used to being in. I mean, this, is, this, is, this storm is only caused because of the cold one. <laughs> this storm is called, do you know how God's going to fight for your children? Can I tell you the level that God's going to fight for your children? He's going to make storms happen in the lives of people that are taking your children astray like they never saw in their whole life. They are used to storms, but not this one. Because my God's going to fight for my children, and he's going to shake up whatever he has to shake up to get my kids to go into the right direction and to walk in their call. He's going to cause those that are really good sinners to be afraid of the level of sin that is coming their way. He's going to cause mariners who are easily uh, know how to flow on any type of water, but this water is going to be so much, so heavy, so intense that they don't know what to do they're afraid. Uh, you know, I love it because even when a child, my child or your children, are, my children are not running from the Lord. Thank the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And may they never, bam, in Jesus' name, we kick it all off. Right? All of our children, <laughs> we just got to address it all. All of our children, if a child is running from the Lord, I want you to know God is going to fight for them. If they're running, not even from the Lord, but they're running from their calling. Because we're going to see something here in Jonah's communication that he didn't feel like he was disconnected from God. He was just running from what he was called to do. He says, and it says, the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo. I love it. They're, they're doing spiritual and natural things. <laughs> Help us. You know, it, it says that they, um, they had over 70 men on this and they were all had their own, their own gods. And they were all running around with their own little idols in their hands, calling on their God, trying to get this wind and this this turmoil to stop. I just thought that was amazing, the thing to see. (laughs) Sorry. I was just in my own mind. They were afraid and they were, every man cried out to his his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship, uh, that was in the ship into the sea to lighten its load. But Jonah had gone down. Look what happened. Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. He was fast asleep in the belly of his deception. He was fast asleep. And I believe that there's a generation that's fast asleep. And we need to see that God is setting alarms in the earth that cause the earth to look like it's in major trouble. Is causing the ocean, the ocean, remember the world is the ocean. Remember the world is the ocean? That's the picture of the Talmud. The Talmud says the ocean is the world. And it's just, now it's causing the world to look like it's in a major, major trouble. I don't know if you guys are paying attention. But the world looks like it's being harassed by something bigger than itself. And we see here that there is a generation that is asleep in the bottom of the boat feeling like they're safe enough to sleep. No one else is sleeping on this boat except for the one calling from, the one that has a calling from God. I want you to say no one else is sleeping except the one that, the one that is able to bring a stop to this. I want you to see that. Now, this is important because the, the enemy's plan is to lull the sleep, the ones that can bring change to get them in a place of such slumber that they're not going to do anything while everyone's trying to do whatever they know to do 
to bring change to this. And we need to, we need to allow God to awaken our sleepers in our lives. Verse 6, and so the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper? I love this captain. The captain, I want you to, I want you to see this because I told you the story a while ago that when I was in jail and I, I wanted to get out, it wasn't a preacher that came that helped me. But it was one that was in the same boat with me. They came and helped me and said, hey, listen, I don't, I don't live this way, but you, you got to wake up. Right. And I, I, I love this captain because this captain is doing the same thing that this this person did for me is they woke me up to God when I was sleeping and I was running for my call. I want you to know I was running from my call, Kn knew that God had a plan for me and told God that I wasn't willing to give my life over to him until I was sure that I wasn't going to be a hypocrite. Because I still like to party. And so I said, I'm not going to do it until I'm done with my party. That was my conversation. I know it's not. But I wonder how many of uh, young people we know have the same conversation. That they come to church because they have to, but in their mind they're thinking, I just can't give myself completely to it because I have a little party still in me. And they are fully asleep. And then he says, arise and call on, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so, they, so, they, so that we may not perish. And so he's, he's challenging the only one that's not calling on God, the only one that is able to call on God and cause God to stop. He's challenging them. And I pray that if, you, if your children in watching or if any of our children have worldly people in their lives and they're running from the call, may they be so desperate for salvation that they begin to pull out of them the revelation of how to get saved whether they like it or not. Look what happens. He says in verse 7, and they said to one another, come, let us cast lots. So they're, they're saying, call on your God. Well, stop sleeping um, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has been, has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lots, the lot fell on Jonah. So they cast a bunch of lots and one of them turned and, re and pointed at Jonah. Can you, it's you. Can you imagine how you can't even hide in your deception, in your sin, in your sleepiness, in your... I'm telling you, I'm praying that our children cannot hide ever, 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 ever. Even divination will point them out as being the one that the cause, the call of God is on to bring change. Big old arrow. Everything's pointing, saying, you don't belong here. May our, may our children never fit into the world. May they always be pointed out. You don't belong here. And all this trouble I'm experiencing is because you are in the wrong place at the wrong time for the wrong reason. And we need to make sure we can get you in the right place at the right time for the right reason, that our children will live according to the call of God. That's what happened here to Jonah. Divination pointed him out. Crazy. Craziness. I love the Bible. I just love it. Then they said to him, please tell us, for what cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? Or what people are you? What are you? So they're listing all the reasons that they know trouble will come to them. Okay, what's your occupation? Maybe, you're, maybe you've stolen or you did bad business. This is coming upon us. Maybe you come from a bad city. Maybe you come from a bad family. Maybe you're just a bad, you know, so they're trying to list all these things out. And then Jonah says something, and he responds in a way that shows them that none of these things are the reason this happening. I am a, of the Hebrew, so he's saying I'm of a righteous nation. I'm a Hebrew, uh, and I fear the Lord. So he still has a position even though he's running from God and not walking in the call of God, that he's right with God. He has this position, I fear the Lord, the God of heaven and the God who has made the sea and the dry land. And so he's saying, I am completely in righteousness. My God is so powerful, so mighty. He, he lifts God uh, up in this place and with, with these people. And then the men said, were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? Because he's a righteous man. He shouldn't be with them. Why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may, may, may be calm for us? And for the sea was growing more temp temptuous. Um, 
then verse, uh, verse 12, and he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will, calm, will, will, will become calm for you. For I know that this great temp tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard. That word rode hard means they, it's like digging a, a deep hole. They kept digging and kept digging, but they were just going deeper and deeper and deeper in their row. And so there is no escape for them in the natural. They rode hard, but they, they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous, more temptuous, temp, 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 yeah, tempestuous um, against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, we pray, O oh Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. Look who they're calling out on. They're calling out to the Lord. Don't let us perish for this man's life. I'm telling you, our children will try to run or someone's children, child will try to run from God. But at the, in the midst of their running, more people will get saved. Look what happened. These guys converted. Look what happened. And do not charge us with innocent blood for you. For you, O oh Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased in its raging. And then the, the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered sacrifices to the Lord. I pray that our children will wake up, fulfill the call of God. I pray for this youth quake, this youth awake, this youth uh, awakening, that our young people would come to their senses and to the knowledge of God, and that even as they're running, that if they're running, that the Lord will awaken people around them and that people will get saved because of them. That no matter where they go, salvation and deliverance happens. No matter what they do, deliverance and salvation happens. No matter what goes on, they are the ones that can bring calm to every storm. Even as uh, Jonah was tossed back into the ocean, it was as if he was on the right track. Even though he didn't have the vehicle to get him there, he was on the right track because he was no longer going away from God. And I pray every child that is backslidden today, I call you back into the call of God. Every child that is sleeping and running from your call, I call you into the call of God. Every child that is now uh, focused in its wrong direction, its wrong way, I pray in Jesus' name that you would wake up, that you would come from the, the, the very bottom of the boat and you would rise up to the heights that God's called you to go into, that you would go into Nineveh and bring transformation and change. I pray, wake up, O oh sleeper. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Let the power of the awakening begin to move on our young people. Lord, let them just wake up from their sleep. Let them wake up from their slumber. Lord, as the world is crying out and is needing and needing a Savior and wanting a Savior and wanting you to come through and bring deliverance, Lord, there's young people in every place that are, that are called to walk out the power of the Holy Spirit and called to walk out the, the movement of God and to release the glory of the Lord. I pray, Lord, let every young person that is running from their call to wake up in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that this young generation would realize that it is, it is, it is time to come alive, to live the call, to walk in the purpose. For in you, is the salvation of the world. In you is the salvation of your family, the deliverance of your people. In you, there's a world system, Nineveh, that is ready to repent, and they are looking for someone that would come with the voice. I pray, Lord, give this generation their voice. Let them recognize that their voice is powerful and potent. Let them recognize that their voice should not be hidden in the boat, but it should be released, Lord. Let them be removed from isolation. Break off all isolation. Break it off, God. Any isolation that's working against him, we ask that you would break it in Jesus' name. We pray, break up the boat that keeps him in isolated thinking. Break up the boat that keeps him in fear. Break up the boat that keeps him sleeping. Break up the boat that's leading them to a broken heart, a broken life, a broken way of being. Lord, we say, break up the boat that's carrying them the wrong direction. And Lord, let their call manifest, God. Let them begin to walk in their call. Any children that we know 
even either in our families or anyone that we know that are not walking in their call. We pray, Lord, let them get in their call. Let the call of God. God has called them to go out and speak something, to do something, to manifest something. Let the call of God be revealed and released in them. We pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Lord, release the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, on all of our children. It is now time to awake sleepers. It is now time to awake sleepers. It is now time for a generation to wake up. It is now time for a generation to answer the call. It is now time for a generation to be effective in the world. It is time, and I pray, Lord, let this season where the world will wake up before the church wakes up. Let the world wake up before the church wakes up. Let the world have a craving for the things that are godly before the church itself has a craving. And, Lord, let this repentance take place in the hearts of those that are, that are called to go forth into the world and speak Lord, let there be vehicles of righteousness and hope that carry us to the right place, to be in the right place, Lord. We thank you, Father, that no matter what, our children will not miss the mark. Our children will walk in their purpose. Our children will live according to the will of God. Thank you, Lord. Everywhere they go, wherever they are, whoever they're with, let them all recognize that there's something more to them. There's something more to them. There's more that is supposed to come out of them. There's more that is supposed to be manifest in them. Oh, we thank you, Father, that you are causing this generation to arise, that they would arise and call on your name. As that, as that mariner said to Jonah, arise and call on your God. Perhaps he will consider us that we may not perish. I pray, Lord, let our children and the young people in this earth know that if they called on you, if they just called on you, you would always answer you will always answer. You will never reject their call. And you will never reject their plea. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Mama shere be ke poti ni misturi amdara raba hamra vashata. We pray, Lord, open the eyes of a generation, God. Bere di be shtore mari amdara rama sata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brava shere de behemi. We thank you, Father. Brava shara maham rovo shotar di stoyata. Romans 13 says this, love does not harm, does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believe. I pray, Lord, let this love manifest Lord, let this love be the, the catalyst of the awakening. 
Lord, let the love of God be the catalyst of the awakening. Let the love of, of the Lord in your church, in your people, let our children know love, walk in love, feel love and experience love, that they are living in the awakening. Lord, let them just wake up and come to their senses. Let them wake up and come to the knowledge of the time that they're in, that they would know the time. The Bible says here in verse, 13, verse 11, knowing the time. I pray, Lord, let us all know the time. Let us all look around and see the right time. Let us evaluate the proper time that we're in. Even as parents, not to be tolerant of this time, not to allow things that this time uh, should not be allowed, not to allow, have the allowance of things that this time should not allow. We will not allow attitudes and we will not allow rebellion and we will not allow anything that would lead to running off to Tarshish. We thank you, Father, that we know what time we're in. We know the time we're living in. We can look and see what time it is. And in that, we're going to raise our children according to the knowledge of the time that we know we live in. We thank you, Father, that we're going to pray prayers that help us understand the time that we are living in and help our children understand the time that they are in. We pray for this generation that is a part of this church and a part of the youth quake Lord, we pray, Lord, let them understand the time that they're in. Let them not waste the time that they have. Let them not waste the moments that they're in. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let this time be known by our generation, our children. Let them know this time. That now is the high time to awaken out of sleep. Lord, I pray, God, let it be known that this is the high time. This is not the time where it's, there's a lot of time in it. This is time where time is at its highest point, where things are, time is running out, where time is running out, where it's not a lot of wasted time. We can't waste these moments. Every moment has to mean something. Everything that we do has to mean something, that we can't put the call off any longer, that we have to run hard after the call. We have to live in this call and this purpose because it is high time. It is the right time to be awakened. It is the time. There's no more time to sleep. This is the time to awake out of the sleep. This is the time. I pray, Lord, let our young people have a sense of the timing inside of them. Lord, that is high time. Let a sense of urgency come upon our children. Let a sense of urgency come upon our children to serve God. Let a sense of urgency come upon our children to serve God. Let a sense of urgency come upon us as parents to raise up children that are called by God. Let us have a sense of urgency in our ministries to raise up youth and young adults and children that will serve God. It is high time to give complete, absolute focus to God. It's time time for the sleep to be rubbed out of our eyes. It's time for our eyelids to open wide and for our pupils to come fully brightened and fully open, to be completely open and visual and seeing what God wants us to see, that the light is there and the bright shining light is there, that there is nothing dim in our future, no dim future. We can see clearly what God has planned for us. We can see clearly what God has for us. And I declare in the name of Jesus that your eyes eyes are wide open. I pray for prophetic insight for this generation, that their eyes are wide open, that their eyes, they're not seeing sleepy, they're not sleepwalking, but their eyes are wide open and they have prophetic eyes, prophetic sight, the ability to see what no one else sees, for it is high time. The light is at its perfect height to see. We thank you that they're waking up out of sleep for now. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believe. What a statement. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The time is at hand. Thank you, Lord, that salvation is nearer than when we thought it was. Thank you, Lord, that our children are going to get a sense that it's time for salvation. It's time to live saved, to walk saved. Come on, if you have someone that is in mind that's a backslider, will you begin to just think on them right now? Just begin to think on them right now and just pray in the spirit. 
I want them to have a sense of salvation. It's time for salvation right now. It's time for salvation right now. Even before the first time you believed, it's now high time. We call you home, backslider. We call you back into your right place, sleeper. We call you to awaken out of your slumber. We call you to wake up out of your slumber. I, I declare in the name of Jesus, every sleeper in my family, wake up. Every backslider, wake up. Everyone that has gone from the call of God, wake up. Even if you're walking in church every week, but you're asleep, we say, wake up to your call. Wake up to the lifestyle that you're supposed to live. Wake up to the mandate of God on your life. Wake up. Meaning of Mahamrava, verse 12 of this same chapter says, the night is far spent. It's, it's already, you spent all the night. The night is all spent. There's no more darkness. There's no more room for darkness to function. The day is at hand. We declare right now, today, darkness the, the hour that it was supposed to function in is over. It is over in Jesus' name. There is no more night in our families. There is no more darkness in our families. There's no more night in our lives. No, no more night in our children's lives. No more night in this generation. It is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Lord, we command all foolishness, all works of darkness to be cast off. We cast them off in Jesus' name. We cast them off. And, and, and it doesn't say that they have to, we can, we can speak to things in our families and we can cast off the works of darkness. We cast off of you. Whatever that work of darkness is, cast it off of them right now. We command it to leave you in Jesus' name. We cast it off and we cast it out in Jesus' name. We cast foolishness off of you. We cast foolishness out of you. We cast the mindset the wrong and improper way. Just like the mariner stood there and said, get up, sleeper, call on God. We cast off the works of darkness. We cast those works off in the name of Jesus. We cast pornography off of this generation. We cast, we cast homosexuality off of this generation. We cast, we cast foolishness off of this generation. We cast childishness off of this generation. We cast, Lord, we cast every evil work off of this generation, God. All the, 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 the desires for things off of this generation. We cast it off in Jesus' name. We cast you out of this generation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. Ah. It says, after you cast off the works of darkness, then you put on the armor of light. So we take on this generation, the armor of light. We take on this generation in from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, the helmet of salvation. We put it on you in Jesus' name that your mind and your thoughts are saved. We put on you the breastplate of righteousness, that you have righteousness that covers your heart. We, t we put on you the belt of truth, that you live and walk in the truth and know the truth. We put on you the boots of peace, that everywhere you go, peace is going to function. And peace is going to lead your steps and lead your way. We put on you the sword of the Spirit, that you would walk in the Word of God, and you would be reminded of the Word of God every step you take, everything you do. We put, we put with you and put on you the shield of faith that you will live by faith and not by sight, that you would have a belief system that God will deliver you and keep you all the days of your life. We put on you the cloak of justice, that you would live in the justice of God. And we put on you the garments of praise, that you would live in the praise and the righteous celebration of God all the days of your life. We put on you this full armor of the light of God. We make it an armor of light, not just a regular armor, but an armor of light. 
where you are a display of the day, that you're not just in the day, but you are a display of what the day is. You look just like the light that's in the skies. You are, so, you are just as bright and shiny. You are just as luminous as, as you're just as luminous as the sun itself, as luminous as Christ itself. We put on you Christ and we pray in you the form of Jesus Christ. We say, Jesus, be formed in our children. Be formed on our children. Be formed in this generation. Be formed on this generation. Let them walk in the light, God. It's to finish that scripture off. It says, let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry, in drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust, in lust, not in strife and envy. We cast off and we say, Lord, we, that we have a mindset that contradicts every one of these things. We thank you that we are not, uh, we are not fighters and drunken brawlers for the world. We're drunken brawlers for Jesus. We fight for the things of God, and we do it with a, with a spiritual drunkenness. We are not going to live in lewdness, crudeness, or lust, but we are driven to covet the things of heaven, to live in the things of God. We're not going to live in strife and envy but we take upon us in our lives those lives, the life of peace. And if we strive, we strive to enter into your holiness. We strive to enter into your righteousness and your rest. We strive to enter in. And we only, we only give our hearts to you. We thank you, Lord. So we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and we make no provision for the flesh to lust in, uh, to, to fulfill its lust. We declare this generation is fully awake and not given in to the, 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 the running away to Tarshish. But we will live in the call of God and stay in its proper place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen.